started yeah let's start so where to start what is virtualization mr rakesh yes virtualization is nothing but it's a abstraction of physical layer like mm -hmm. uh, on any single physical server or any which physical device we can run multiple virtual machines or server or uh, operating system without interference or like uh, uh, directly connection to the physical server fine okay then i want to know what is physical server first any physical server models <clears throat> mostly uh, in uh, enterprise environment we use like uh, any uh, uh, hp server dell server and there are multiple other server but yes ibm cisco right so uh, then i need models hp dl380 hp hp proline dl380 gen 10 in 8, 9, 10, there are multiple generations. DL 360 Gen 10. 350 also. Okay, yeah. So, Rajesh, which version, uh, which, oh, sorry, which model you worked on it last week? Last week, you installed uh, some ESX, right? Rajesh? You there? Ah, ah no, no. Mm. Last week, uh, which, week, which one you tried? I will try the uh, 6.5. I think uh, I installed uh, ESX just for uh, only mm, lab purpose. Ah, uh, lab purpose. Fine. Okay. So before uh, that, let's understand the rack structure. But uh, it's not installed. I already told you, no. It's not installed. It's failed. You will not be able to install it. The, uh, you need a driver issue. Ah, uh, driver issue. Okay. Okay, let's understand the rack structure. What is the dimensions? We'll call it as 42 U. Correct. Okay, then what is U? U is nothing but it's uh, in rack there is a space where we can uh, tie up the nut to the rack server. Right? 1 U is 1.75 inches. So if you look at the rack, you will have a numbers. Okay, so let's say for example, this space you call it as one U. One U model. Okay. Example. Okay, and let's say for example, five twenty six. If you say to you model, is this? What is the difference? Right? If it is occupying to you space, and you call it as to you model, to you form factor, technically, then what is the difference between these two? Maybe capacity or performance wise, like more CPU, more. Um, more number of more space means more CPU, more resources, more components, more capacity, more resources. Okay, so where to go? Fine. Any other models you're familiar with? Cisco UCS, Cisco. There is some model B and C model. Okay, model, model name. But C220 M4. Let's say Cisco C220 M4. Legacy model. Latest okay. is M5, I believe. But let's see M5. See end of life model. The product is no longer being sold. It's fine. So, this is one U. Okay. 
one year, right? By saying one year or two year? One year, it seems one. one. Yes, one year only. Form factor, portfolio <coughs> in one one RU form factor. Right? DDR4, 12 GBPS SAS throughput total. Fine. You will have one, two, three, eight, total eight hard disks you can insert. Four to four years, correct. Okay. And if you look at the symbols, what is the meaning of these five? Internal error, fan error, temperature, yes. network, yes. Uh, power supply, and network. Okay, one of the component will turn it to amber when there is a issue. Problem. Go back. Yeah, dual power supply. Why you need a dual power supply? For redundancy. If redundancy. power supply goes down, then other one can take up. Yes. And you'll see four network cables. Why you need a four? Four. For okay, teaming purposes, if you want teaming and if you want to segregate the network. Teaming. Let's say, for example, I have these two. Okay, so these two I can connect to one switch. Actually, I'll connect it to two different switches for redundancy. And if you are installing Windows on top of this server, you can log in into Windows and you can create teaming of these two and assign IP. Right? Then oh. what is the purpose of this and what is the purpose of this? What is the purpose of these two? These two also you can if you want to connect some uh, segregate network like if you want to some internal no. network you ask then no 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 this is your C I M C just like your I oh, that is a yeah one port is for uh, remote support if you look at this you'll see CIMC. if you look at management oh, okay, yeah. okay and this is one zero one zero one serial cable you will connect uh, one cable and you will leave as it is that's it if engineer came in for troubleshooting he will connect uh -huh. his laptop directly yeah. and do the troubleshooting directly or you will you can connect this with crash card okay so this is your ILO in if it is HP this is ILO if it is Cisco you call it as CAMC if it is Dell ID rack the symbol here is M, management. These two are for production. Clear? Then what is PCI 1, PCI 2? If you want to install so many other device, peripheral device. If, if you want to install more components, let's say for example, I want to install two more network cards like this. So you can remove this plate and you can buy new network card and, and you, can, you can install it okay or, or else if you have a HBA card for SANS for this purpose you can buy and you can insert two HBA cards here right based on the requirement you can add additional hardware at PCS slot this is <coughs> excuse me I'll say one new one new model Okay, well, when it comes to you, let's see how to you looks like. To you, let me search 240. Same thing, if you look at same 8 hard disk, 
and the coolant fans, right? Coolant fans are there on the front. We go to back. Same configuration, no change. Two power supplies and two production nicks, one management, one serial, one management and one serial. But you will see peripheral devices are in one U, you got only two, two, two empty plates. But in two U, you can have six components. You can you can have extra NICs. You can have HBA cards, or if you want to install graphics, you can put the graphic graphic card. You need to install inside. External graphic cards won't support it, right? Anything else you want to discuss in physical servers, Mr. Rakesh? Right. Enough? All about you. Okay. So, take any one server. Take any one server. You have a physical server. Now, if I will install Windows, server will act as a Windows server. Mm. If I will install Linux, this will act as a Linux server. Now, I don't want to install any Windows or Linux. Then what should I do? I need to install Point seven is latest running in the market. But I'll say six point zero is installed on my system, so I'll stick it to six point zero. It is installed. Now, what is this? ESXi. What is ESXi? Hmm? ESXi is nothing but it's a thin layer which create a uh, what? Abstraction layer, which is a uh, what to do? Okay, so let me explain a different way. Let's say, for example, you have a small laptop, okay, and or a small server you can take. You installed Linux. What is the first component when you install a Linux? What what the, what is the first component that gets installed? Hmm? Hmm? For example, this is small physical server, hmm. and I have installed Linux on top of it. What is the first component that gets installed? It's kernel mostly. What is kernel? Kernel is a main component. It's a main component of any OS operating system. Okay. Right. Linux distribution. Fine. Okay. Now, as a user, you can log in into Linux. Mm -hmm. And you can run commands. Let's say, for example, three users logged in. Three users, three users logged into Linux server. How to log in? Putty. Mm -hmm. Right? Using Putty, he logged in. Okay, once you log in, you you are running some commands. Mm. I am running some commands, and Rajesh running some commands. Mm. All the three instructions are gi given to kernel, and kernel is working with hardware, interpreting with hardware, and mm. giving giving the respective output. And it mm. is doing it parallelly. How it is doing? Right. Whenever you log in. Mm. 
you you will get allocated with one shell hmm. shell is executable area where you will run your instructions right hmm. so let's say for example what it is doing you have a ram and it is one partition for running the os and rest of the user partitions at the moment there are three sessions are running session one session two session three this is for os so imagine so if i run the instruction my <coughs> instruction will run on this part if rakesh will run the instructions his run, instructions will run on his part if rajesh is running his instructions will run his part what is the total ram size 8 gb example how much operating system is taking 2 gb how much you left with 6 gb and how it is managing other 6 gb it is ra managing randomly based on the instruction size and the demand just in case if i want to explain it layman agree and parallel it is running the instructions and giving the output on our respective screens three different shells okay now take same concept and bring that concept into vmware or any other virtualization platform your hardware will remain hardware there is no change and your hypervisor is sorry you are you are calling as a kernel right so you call, you, whatever the kernel that you are calling as you call this as a hypervisor you call this as a hardware same hardware right and i said three different users instead of users i am saying three different virtual machines okay now windows linux windows 2019 and windows 2016 let's say for example so i'm running three different servers now <coughs> let's take the same example how it is working base os if it if it is a 8 gb ram let's say for example mm. base os what is the base os here esxi is a base os in this case linux is a base os and it has the three different pools active pools as of now to run instructions windows 2016 windows 2019 and linux so if windows server is sending some instructions hypervisor will pick the instruction and execute in that particular ram space and give the output to windows server and if a linux server is running some instructions hypervisor will pick the request execute with the hardware hardware is your ram and cpu oh. okay and give hand over to the linux server and so on do you see any difference between these two the linux functionality and the hypervisor functionality here it is simply running the instructions here it is simply running the virtual machine <coughs> Virtual machine is also an instruction software, right? Mm, it's v VM itself is a software. Yes. Okay. In other words, okay, your hardware is a base. Your hypervisor is the parents, and your virtual machine are the childs. If you want to understand in layman. right this is what type of hypervisor it is hmm? type 1 bare metal bare metal 
hypervisor type 1 then what is type 2 post it so there is another type of hypervisor no one will use in production you will have a hardware on top of it you will install OS on top of it you will install hypervisor on top of it you will run virtual machines ok so hardware windows 10 VMware workstation workstation Windows Server Linux Server whatever right this is type 2 hypervisor where you will use in environments this we will use it in data centers clear any confusion up to this no hmm? Rajesh um, no, no. able to understand Oh, yeah, I understand. Okay. Now, imagine I have one ESXi. Imagine I have one ESXi. I have one ESXi server. IP is okay and I do have one Cisco switch and my laptop Okay, and I do have one Wi-Fi router. How the connectivity is? I've connected one cable from here to here, and one cable from here to here and another cable from here to internet right and I can connect one cable from my switch to here right Disconnected now. I've connected one cable and also Wi Fi, both. <coughs> this is the setup. Let me power on my lab. Okay, so switches 192, 168, 1.100. This is my switch we'll see more in detail when we are discussing in network class and IP config 142 and 141 my mistake is here I mentioned as 149 it is 141 fine okay and I have already installed ESXA on top of it can I create a VMs on top of this ESXi? So the lab lab setup will be something like this. I need to create multiple VMs here. One, two, three, ESXi. 
ESXi1. ESXi2 because I don't have uh, multiple servers to run the lab so what I will do I will utilize one ESXi server and I'll create multiple ESXi servers okay and what it is we simple so these are the four <coughs> four systems I need to build at first stage to, to set up the lab Okay, so let's see if the system is up and running or not. How to log in? Okay, logged in. If you look at the system configuration, this is my ESX server and go to summary. You'll see this is normal desktop only. I have one SATA disk and one SSD. I have another SSD which is crashed. So SSD is of 111 GB and only 40 GB left with at the moment and 32 GB RAM, one CPU, quad core and I already have two different labs running. So what I will do, I'll dismantle this first lab. Okay, I'll dismantle the first lab and I'll keep the net NetApp lab because I'm running another class. I need that lab. Let's see what is the free space now. 105 GB recovered. Only 12 GB taken by other two, two machines which are running now. Browse data store and see if you have anything else. Nothing right. Only two VMs are running. Okay. So what is the first step? Create the virtual machines. Okay. So create the virtual machine. So you need to create virtual machine. Okay. Before that, what is VM? What is VM? Virtual machine is a kind of a software, uh, virtual, uh, so software computer, which uh, runs um, uh, operate operating system. You utilize the RAM, uh, CPUs, and it like a real. Okay. Virtual machine is just a collection of files, which will enable you to run as individual server. It will run as a individual. <laughs> server right so let me create a vm and see what all the files i'll say simply it's a collection of files what files we'll see now okay let me create a vm virtual <sighs> machine custom lab esxi host one I'll select SSD2. Hardware version will explain when we are when we do the upgrade activity. So the compatibility matrix uh, for now just leave with default level. And I want to install ESXi, not Windows or Linux. So select others and ESXi 6x. This version I want to install it. Okay. And how many CPUs? I'll say two. Sockets two. And what's the RAM size? I'll say six GB RAM. I want to allocate to that particular virtual machine. Next. And I want to have two NIC cards and they will be on VLAN 40. Okay, both the both the NIC cards in VLAN 40. Next, you'll get a SCSI controller, see software SCSI controller. Default. Next, you you want to assign a virtual hard disk 
to the newly created virtual machine or not will assign one hard disk right so create a new hard disk Let's say 15 GB thin provisioning is enough next SCSI ID you got zero 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 okay hardware numbering for your hard disk next edit virtual machine settings continue I don't require floppy anymore and I have a CD go to data store inside the data store and SATA you'll have ISO folder there you'll see all the ISOs required for this lab what I need now VMware Visor Installer 6.0 sorry 6.5 I want to install this one 6.5 I want to install okay and I'll say connected power on and I'll say um, boot options same 10,000 milliseconds delay that's it I'll say finish so VM has been created VM has been created oh. now I said virtual machine is a collection of files virtual machine is created where, where those files are located On select the VM select the VM go to summary go to summary and you'll see two different hard disk you select the SSD one browse data store and there will be one folder with your name right there is one folder with whatever the VM is there with that name once the VM got created you will see the folder is created and also it has three different files what are those files dot BMX dot VMX dot VMDK configuration file and what else second dot VMDK dot VMDK virtual disk virtual hard disk and dot VM SD SD snapshot right what's your snapshot descriptor it's not a snapshot SD yeah, is a descriptor descriptor yeah. okay you remember when you create a VM okay you will get only these three files at first stage collection of a files when you create these are the files only these are the files okay when you power on the same you will see lot of these files were changed just select or on now refresh you'll see a lot of files are there one is when you power on these three files will be there definitely so in addition, addition to that in addition to that dot nv ram virtual memory ram configuration date file or virtual memory
what else dot swap yes dot dot bsw huh? we swap right dot hmm. log dot log file logs sorry hmm. whenever you power on the vm new new log file will be created okay that new log file will be in use until you reboot the server again okay okay how many times it has the seven files six or seven, yeah. seven files once the seven files were uh, done after the eighth file the first file will be deleted okay the retention is seven log files. Okay, what else? David missed. Yes, VM auxiliary LCK. Log file. VMX LCK and VMX auxiliary. What LCK will do? right vmx file so what what changes will track let's say for example you powered on the vm but you want to change the VLAN. You don't need to power off the VM. You can simply change the VLAN. Mm. Those settings will be saved in this auxiliary file. Okay. Till what time? Till you reboot the server. Till you reboot the server. Till the time, what it will do? It will hold the data in this file. Okay. And this file will check the integrity of this and integrity of this. It will compare these two files and it will maintain the integrity via this file. Because this is main file, but when you power on the uh, when you power on the VM, this will become read only. You cannot write the data onto that file. That will become read only. So when once you shut down, then the configurations will be saved. Clear? Huh? Fine. So VM is powered on. Just launch the console and see what's going on. So ESXi 6.5 is loaded. Remember you are installing this ESXi in your hardware Dell server only. Hmm? Last time when you install, I mean, I'm, I'm explaining it to Rajesh. Mm -hmm. Imagine oh, no. you, are in, oh, no. you, you are installing this ESXi on oh. physical server only. You connected the monitor, okay. you connected the monitor and you simply oh. powered on. Now you got the screen, okay. right? Okay. Oh. There is no change. So from here, no from here onwards, here. we'll see what all the options that we need to perform. Okay. okay, this is how you install and configure the ESXi server in your physical 
or in lab environment mm-hmm. there is no change in it okay okay so okay just enter and press f11 to accept the license and discover the hardware now what it will do it will go and discover the hardware on your server and if it founds something it will give you okay and it discovered 15 gb hard disk because i gave 15 gb to that vm select and us keyboard yes give some password okay now it is again scanning for additional hardware see after scanning it is giving an an warning saying boss this is not the real time hardware you are installing esxa on top of a vm not on top of physical hardware i know it it's fine please ignore my warnings okay but in your case in this screen you will get no network adapters found error virtualization or yeah you can read virtualization <coughs> not a feature of cpu is not enabled in bios okay right but rajesh in your in your case on this screen you will get an error uh, saying no network uh, error. no network uh, drivers found yeah right okay so you, uh, you, you will not be able to proceed further the reason is uh, the uh, reason is esxa server is unable to discover the drivers which okay. you have installed on that particular server so recommendation okay. is you need to upgrade the firmware of dell hardware and try okay. installing esxa once again then it will work okay 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 so ah okay enter now simply f11 to install that's it only three steps we have to wait for 5 minutes uh, you'll see the esx gets installed and we can access it okay give me like one or two minutes once installation is done and we'll reboot and we'll configure we cannot install any uh uh in we am where in uh, in the desktop sir only rack sir we, we have to install i have installed right? i have installed the esxa on a desktop but uh-huh. th- there is a driver issue i i okay. have ma- manually download the drivers and real tech drivers yes okay okay desktop drivers desktop drivers okay, okay. Uh-huh. i have uh-huh. to install i have to install it on esxa image at uh-huh. first then i have okay. to okay. install the esxa okay okay but in your case if you have, if you uh-huh. have the dell server dell real time hardware server then uh-huh. you go ahead with the firmware upgrade once okay. the firmware is upgraded then you can download 6.5 and try to install it it will work okay okay So let's wait. Okay. It is stuck at seven twenty-seven. No, it is stuck at twenty-seven. I'm not sure. Okay, let's see. It will progress quickly after some time. progressing Okay, let it finish. Wait 
for some time. Done. So simply click on it and reboot. That's it. Done. Now you can disconnect the CD. Go to edit settings. CD client device. Okay. Now once the once the server is rebooted, it will be booting from local hard disk. Right. So now it is loading the ESXA from local hard disk itself. What is the hard disk size? 15 GB. Okay, let's see what options you have. Now you'll see VMware ESXA 6.5 and you'll see only two CPU, i5 processor and 6 GB RAM which I have allocated. Right. In your real time, if your ESXS server is of 128 GB RAM, you will see 128 GB memory and 24 CPU, you will see 24 CPU. That's it. Okay. So, yeah, system is ready. Now, you, now if you look at, you will have only two keys. You have only two keys rest of the keyboard will not work okay press f2 to customize and give the password configure management network adapters you'll see both the adapters are there i have two adapters fine and vlan id optional you don't need to set any vlan id Go to IPv4 and set static IP. Press space bar, space bar to select the option 192.168.40.41.255.255.255.0.192.168.40.1 is the gateway. Hmm? Enter. IPv6, IPv6, disable IPv6, we don't require any IPv6, DNS configurations, if you have a DNS server, you can give a DNS server in your real time, and lab ESXi host 1 dot, just an example I'm just giving, there is no such server or host name i want to reboot yes hmm. if you look at yes configuration is also done there is nothing else there's nothing else we can do on this so close and what is the ip what is the ip 192 168.40.41 advanced just give me one moment Pause. so proceed okay what is the username root and the password we'll see it is acting as an individual ESXA server. It has some CPU, it has some memory, and also storage, all the things. And you can deploy virtual machine on top of it, and you can also run the VMs on top of it. VM1. Um, 
downloads software tiny linux next i'm just trying to install thin provisioning okay finish Okay, so machine has been created. If you look at VMS has been created, and if you power on, you are getting an error. See, you are getting an error. It's fine. That is due to nested virtualization. You need to do some tweaking to power on the VMs because where this VM is setting now. Logically, it is. Let's say, for example, I have one ESXi server. Okay, on top of it, I have created one VM. On top of it, I have created one more VM. This is main ESXi server. This is nested ESXi server. This is the VM which I have created, VM1. That is the reason why it is not powering on. So what we can do is, we can do some tweaking and get the things done that we'll see later. But understand what we did so far? Any questions? Mr. Rakesh? No, I think it's a very simple. No, sir. No, sir. Okay. So the thing is, the ESXi installation configuration, what we did, what is VM? We have seen. And what else we did? This is the first thing we did. And also, we have seen how to install and configure ESXi host. This is also we did, right? We have installed and configured with IP 192.168.40.41. This is the IP. So these two tasks we performed so far. What else we need? I said there is an issue with the installed ESXi host because it is not the nested one. So, what I need to do is, I need to download one ESXi server from this is the website. If you if you guys want to do some practice, you can go and get the required images customized images for lab purpose okay so nested virtualization let's see what they are saying Yes, access server on us. Okay, we'll see that later on. 6.5. Let's see. Okay. Let's appliance. I'm not sure whether it is going to deploy it or not. I'm just trying to download it. take some time also I have 6.5 which I have already done this downloaded so what I will do I will simply install the already downloaded images but if you want software okay 
so VMware nested ESX 6.1 is also there I don't want this cancel it is also there 6.5 6.0 and 6.7 three files are there what I will do I will install 6.5 update one now before I proceed for the installation there is a small concept called open virtualization appliance and open virtualization format what it is it's a pre-configured virtual machine it's a pre-configured virtual machine let's say for example I have created one virtual machine now what is the virtual machine name lab ESXi01 I can simply power off this okay or shut down it properly and I have this VM this VM has a ESXi installed and configured okay so if I want to copy this configuration what is the VM set of files okay so if I convert this VM into OVA template or you can create a VM oh, sorry you can create a OVF template out of any VM what it will do it will copy the image a particular of particular virtual machine into external file external file will be placed on your desktop or somewhere you mention your network path or anywhere you mention okay so let's say for example this is my VM if I go to file export OVF template so this particular VM will be exported into this name and where do you want to keep it on desktop OVF single file OVA okay so if I say okay what it will do it is exporting the whole image of or the whole configuration of this VM into a file in my desktop okay so I'm not going to export it completely OVA it got exported already Three, what you did uh, what you did just okay. export in OV format right yes OVA file you converted in directly OVA or you made the changes as dot OVA nothing something? nothing I, I just click <coughs> on export export to OVA single file oh, okay, okay. I just click you then it. you got the image this is a single file image similarly I have downloaded so many images from internet where they have tested and configured and fine-tuned as per our lab requirement so what I will do I will use these images to build my lab so what what is the step so third one what is OVA or OVF what it is what is OVA or OVF appliance and format OVA is a single file and OVF for multi two or three files OVA as a single file contains configure contains pre configured VM exported into dot OVA format for reuse if you want to reuse OVF OVF format right understand mm -hmm. so imagine I have multiple OVF files I don't want this file deleted also 
I don't want this image deleted. Now I want to build the lab using that OVF file. How to build? Deploy OVF template. Select and you will see nested ESXA 6.5 update 1. I want to install 6.5 update 1. Fine. Select. Yes. Integrity warning. OK. Licensing. OK. And what is the name? Lab ESXI 01.ibm.r. Let's say for example. OK. And I'll put it on SSD 2. And I'll say thin provisioning. Thin provisioning. And on which VLAN I want to place it? I want to place it on VLAN 40. That's it. So, what I'm doing? This is what we are doing now. Okay, done, deployed. Deploy OVF template is completed. Server is ready. Just open console and power on. Okay, Alt Control Enter to go into full, full screen. See, it is loading. Now you will see the information 6.5 to CPU 6 GB again. Okay. Now, system is up and running. Again, press F2. And the password is a little tricky. VMware, one exclamatory is the password. Let's try. Okay, let me write down the password here in case if you guys want to. Password is VMware, one exclamatory. That is the password. Okay, now. Alt Control Enter, go to Configure Management Network, go to IP Configuration, set Static IP 192.168.40.41. Again, 255, 255.0, and Gateway is 192.168.40.1 .1 is the Gateway. That's it. Enter, Service Restart. DNS eight dot eight and in your real time you'll normally have a uh, different DNS servers. Lab ESXS zero one dot management restart escape escape then yes close now you try it. You try the same once again. On 192.168. 40 <coughs> so Srinivas, uh, yeah. have you made, uh, right now you are connected your laptop with the physical uh, network and uh, also the yes. wireless. So both it's communicating at the time, same time? Yeah, both are in the same VLAN. I can do Hello. You are already connected this uh, wireless or internet? 
ओके सॉरी माय बैड ओके आई आई वॉट इट कनेक्टेड बोथ यस हाउ कम यू कैन कनेक्ट विथ टू आई पीस वायरलेस एंड वाइड what is the use to connect because oh, you are already connecting this wireless directly yeah. wireless you are getting 150 mbps speed wired you will get 1 gb speed uh -huh. i want to deploy some images from my laptop if i deploy it over the wifi so this this 2 hour class will become 4 hours <coughs> then i connect to the cable okay so let me create a vm once again there is no storage in it because it is pre configured image it doesn't have any storage create a new data vm fs data store i'll select 8 gb local 1 i'll say local 1 finish All right now create a vm so this storage is taken from where from local hard disk local hard disk which you have given a 15 gb to esxi right this is pre configured image okay yes correct apply over of template vm1 select now again select tiny linux tiny linux next thin provisioning fine now it's deploying vm has been deployed and if you look at see vm is successfully powered on see done it's working now right control panel network 192 168 will come out and from my command line helping helping 192 168 40. 41 it is working but 40.42 it is not working so see 40.42 it is not working at the moment right destination not reachable hyphen t a continuous ping will be there let's see i'll assign the ip 40.42 40.1 broadcast to 40.1 is gateway 8.8.8.8 and 8.8.8.8.4.4 apply and then terminal ping google.com you'll see it is pinging from inside and once ip is assigned you come out and see the ping is working from last few iterations okay now how the scenario is you have your base server okay on top of it you have created one vm on top of it you have created one more vm okay three vms are running sorry three three layers at the moment what is the first layer ip 192 168 1.151 second layer 192 168 40.42 sorry 41 and what is the second layer 192 168 40.42 okay connected to switch from switch to my laptop if you want you can ping each and every ip clear ping 192 168 1.151 it's working 
40.42 it's working 40.41 it's working all the three ips are working any confusion up to this so what uh, changes or what configuration you made on the switch yes xi nothing nothing i have made no, no, on yes, switch, yes. physical switch, on physical switch. No, 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 no changes. Because yes. why I'm asking? Because you have a different VLAN, how it is communicated, my question is that. Okay, that, that, the VLANs are created on uh, physical switch, and mm -hmm. my ESXi has those port groups already attached. That will see network that class. On, uh, on uh, switch port, it's a uh, trunk mode, right? Yeah. That is, that is already configured that we will discuss in network class. Okay. okay. So First, let's understand mm. basic components. Let's understand how they are working. Let's understand how to install and configure. And let's understand basic terminologies in today's class. And also, we need to build a vCenter. We need to build the Windows Server first before in installing the vCenter and all. So we still need to cover a lot of other stuff. If you are fine up to this, if you are fine, then we'll continue. Okay, if you have any questions, we can discuss. Up to this, what we have covered. Mm -hmm. Clear? Yes, Confusion? Yeah. Okay, so go back and check the my previous lab setup which I have explained. What I'm saying, I need three ESXA servers. As of now, I have only one. Right? Hmm. Only one. What is the IP? 192.168.40.41. So I need to deploy two more. Before that, what I will do, I'll go back and I'll close this window. I'll shut down this VM. I don't require this VM anymore. Just for demonstration, I delete. Gone. Okay. So because why, why I have deleted? Because for this ESXi host, 192.168.40.42, that is the IP I want to give. But as of now, I am running one VM on top of it. This IP I have already allocated to this. So I don't want to do that. So that is the reason I have removed this. And you got your IP back. Go to ESXi server. This is one lab. Deploy OVF template same template I need to deploy next accept the licenses lab ESXi 02 dot All right lab 1 SSD 2 thin provisioning again I'll put it on VLAN 40 done Deployed. Deployed. Okay. Power on. Let's see.
okay this app so you have to Go to management network IP configuration set the IP configured IP has been assigned so go back and test 192 168 40.42 it's working right second server is up and running let me do the third one lab 1 ssd No, no. Okay, VLAN 40 deployed. Okay, done. And power on the third one as well. Power it on. Loaded F two forty three. Dot one is the IP. 
okay dns configuration right done close three years access also done let me check the third one as well 40 dot 43 right three servers are up and running so what we did so far dot forty one Oh, yeah, what I'm doing. Okay, lab ESXI zero one dot. It's a lab. Right. This is what we did so far. Now, what is next? How many such ESXI servers you'll have in your real time? Let's say, for example, hmm? many, or at least in hundreds. ESXi servers I'm talking about, ESXi host. Okay, so for example, you have an enterprise where they are running with more than 100 plus host as part of the day-to-day -day activities. Are you going to log in into each and every ESXi server and check what is happening, everything is okay, any errors, any warnings, any alerts, this kind of stuff you'll do on a daily basis or how you will manage. Rakesh? Hello? Yeah. How you will manage? Yes. We need a central management point. For that, okay. we need to install vCenter. Okay. What is vCenter? And why we need a vCenter? Okay. So, next. What is vCenter servers? and why we need vCenter. Hmm? vCenter server is a central management system which manages all the uh, virtual in, uh, Virtual things, virtual environment, you can say. Right? along with features. 
नीचे ए आर एफ एफ टी डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड स्विच right v center will support some of these additional features one question uh, for v motion we need no need v motion is depend on v center or not yes v motion automatic v motion is in drs v motion okay. is manual so everything is covered in drs okay so if you want to run the drs you should run okay. the v motion start of v motion part of the emotion drs right so and uh, why we need a v center if you want if you want all these features in your environment you need a v center okay along with just additional features along with centralized console single console called v center web application if you want to access all your esxi host in one location that is not only the task you can it will also support these features that is the reason why you need a v center okay so but in v center there are two types of offerings one is clients v center standalone server windows os v center appliance v center so currently most of the people are using appliances mostly from 6.5 and 6.7 people are using and till 6.5 this standalone server is being used so now what we will do we will we will try to install the standalone server because it doesn't require any active directory it doesn't require any additional configurations but okay. if you want to install the appliance you need to have a time server a time sync and active directory dns everything should be in place in lab environment so i don't have a second ssd to run those many servers so what i will do is i'll uh, run the standalone windows server and i'll configure v center on top of it and then i'll run the lab okay so in short i will go with first option so for the first option what needs to be done install and configure windows 2016 server on esxi host how to do that we'll see what is the configuration c drive sorry c drive 40 gb ram 9 gb cpu 4 nic cards 2 this is the configuration server name right this is the configuration i want to build a v center server with this configuration how to do that i'll show you <coughs> so new virtual machine custom this zero one dot ssd default running with 11 2016 i don't have a 2016 mentioned so i'll take threshold <coughs> cpu 9 gb ram <coughs> <laughs> two nic cards i'll put it on both i'll put it on vlan 
<coughs> excuse me 40 <coughs> scsi controller virtual hard disk thin provisioning 40 gb back back scsi yeah thin okay it was selected <coughs> thought it's not selected yeah scsi id edit remove the floppy drive <coughs> and go to <coughs> give me some time resume so go to cd data store iso sata iso files i have server 2016 os file 7 gb okay connected power on options <coughs> boot options again i'll say 10,000 milliseconds finish so vm has been created open power on so it will load the windows now so what we will do is once the windows server is installed and configured and then we'll close this so tomorrow we'll install vcenter server and configure vcenter server and then continue with the rest of the things <laughs> install data center pre-activated KMS accept the license custom 40 GB install it Okay, it's copying. Well, it will take some time. <laughs> Meanwhile, let's minimize this and see what all the options we have in the ESX server. Okay, so, summary. It will give you all the details about the summary. I have ESX licenses and then core CPU and number of templates or VMs at the moment six six NIC cards only one network interface is connected and that's it and number of VMs you can manage resource allocation <coughs> <coughs> actually I can set the limit for these two labs so they ca they cannot go beyond the allocated limit you can watch the performance over here how the vsxa is performing and perform performance is based on cpu performance you can check data store performance how it is working memory how it is behaving power supply storage adapter power supply system performance that's everything configuration you have health check status all the components whether they are working or normal or not and the processors CPU information memory storage networking only one NIC card storage adapters you have multiple storage adapters network adapters only one advanced settings uh, your configuration or if you want to define some specific path to go and get the <coughs> putting devices and all and power management if you have two power supplies then you can do some management there is nothing as such 
licenses and time configuration you can do it a lot of other options okay user management anything anyone is doing anything on the server you can watch it here and permissions who is if I have if I want to give a permission to someone else I can add the users here so that they will get the required permissions okay this is basically a simple overview on L legacy version 6.0 6.5 has a different options you can check it here okay ESXi is a simple summary page simple summary page you have everything just like your summary page right same summary page but in a web UI and there's nothing actions shut down reboot ESXi host services SSH disable enable and secure shell lockdown mode I'll tell you later permissions that's it virtual machines how you manage storage storage data stores and then adapters and then devices what all the devices you have and networking port groups one switch physical NICs kernel NIC and then a couple of TCP IP settings and firewall ports or how many ports are up and running based on that you can allow the rules monitor all the monitoring stuff manage if you click on manage auto restart swap file settings where do you want to keep the swap file date and time hardware the same thing licensing packages what all the packages that are installed as part of the ESXS our installation and configuration and then services and then user user permissions and security same options but different user interface okay so let's see it is still getting files ready fine so what we will do is once the server is installed rebooted I will simply power off I will not assign any IP and all I'll simply power off tomorrow we'll assign the IP and we'll continue because it is taking a lot of time so let me do one thing if I want to minimize the timing and all let me shut down these ESXA host so that system will free up some of the space all the three ESXA servers are shut down only vCenter is up and running because you'll see <coughs> it is really promoting slow that's fine I'll what I'll do is I'll, I'll uh, keep this recording as it is so once this it reaches the hundred percent I'll resume the recording and once it is rebooted and I'll stop the recording and then we'll continue the configuration part once this is installed it will just reboot it okay then I'll stop the recording and I'll close it any questions up to this Rajesh ah, no. No. fine okay let me pause the recording OS has been installed let me see if uh, it gets rebooted quickly then we'll stop here and then I will continue with the vCenter installation configuration and we'll discuss about the vCenter features and vCenter services and integrated database services and all in tomorrow's session Still, still rebooting. Finishing up. Okay, reboot. That's it. So I'll stop here. What I will do is I'll continue with the rest of the session tomorrow.
ओके थैंक यू